سيد بريار أنتم طبعا في واشنطن حاليا تزورون الولايات المتحدة باستمرار لماذا؟ Well, thank you for welcoming me here in D.C. Um, today. Um, I'm here just because I'm like a pilgrim of the French-American relationship, which, as you know, is very uh, strong and very old. The French were the very first to help the insurgents. And uh, we still today, we have a strong relationship, uh, especially regarding, uh, I would say, uh, the rule of law and also uh, uh, law philosophy. And I'm here just to dialogue with my uh, colleagues uh, uh, who are on the bar or who are judges or U.S. Supreme Court justices uh, in this country. فلسفة الدولة الفرنسية وفلسفة الدولة الأمريكية ما هو أهم قاسم مشترك تجدونه بين فلسفة الدولة في فرنسا وفلسفة الدولة في الولايات المتحدة Well, uh, it's, it's an excellent question because we share the same roots and the roots are just uh, the uh, British and French enlightenment uh, which, as you know, is based on uh, uh, some fundamental democratic rules and also on rationality. And uh, so we come exactly from, from the same, I would say, modern mother, uh, French Revolution and uh, American Revolution. Then uh, our countries uh, remain different. But uh, our relationship is based upon mutual influence, and uh, and we have to keep that influence uh, alive. But we get back very often to the roots, uh, which are the same. بطبيعة الحال الثورة الفرنسية أثرت في الثورة الأمريكية. الثورة الفرنسية قامت على مبدأ. الحرية والمساواة والإخاء أو الأخوة الثورة الأمريكية قامت على أساس الحرية والمساواة لكن السعي إلى السعادة كيف تعتقدون أن هذا الاختلاف البسيط على الأقل في السطح قد أخذ الثقافة السياسية الأمريكية في اتجاه مختلف عن الثقافة السياسية الفرنسية. Well, it is a very uh, true difference. As you mentioned, uh, the Americans did not keep the idea of fraternity. And you mentioned uh, in your fundamentals the pursuit of the happiness. Why? Just because the French, uh, and this comes from the revolution, uh, the French thought that uh, uh, there is a necessity to live together, uh, which is in a way more important than individualism. And it will bring us to some issues, I think, later. And it is very essential on the topic we should talk about today. So the fraternity, which was uh, uh, also which had different names in our history, is a very, uh, very fundamental principle uh, in our country. You, uh, in the U.S., you prefer to focus on the pursuit of the happiness in the individual dimension. That's 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 a difference. Yes. يعني من حيث فلسفة الدولة هل يمكن القول بأن الثقافة الفرنسية تركز أكثر على الجماعة خاصة وأن فرنسا الديانة الأصلية هي الديانة الكاثوليكية في هناك تركيز أكبر على الجماعة في الولايات المتحدة هناك تركيز أكثر على الفرد وطبعا في الأصل الديانة في الولايات المتحدة ديانة بروتستانتية هل هذا توصيف دقيق؟ Well, yes. You, you see, I think uh, uh, individuals in this country uh, are first. In our country, we could say, especially regarding l'intérêt général, the general interest, sometimes the group is first. And because we have a, a holist tradition, which, which, which is to look at the group first, 
And uh, it is clear, it is quite clear in our Bill of Rights, especially regarding freedom. W what, what does it mean to be free? It means to, to do what the law makes possible. This is what Montesquieu says. But it is also, according to our Bill of Rights, not to do anything which could be harmful to others, which means the society. And you get the idea also in the, 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 the uh, current case law of Strasbourg, which is named community freedom, rules for the group, rules for the society. So it is true that the, 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 the view is not the same, uh, and it has some consequences on some legal issues. قبل أن نتحدث عن العواقب القانونية لما تحدثت عنه الآن هل تعتقد أن مفهوم الدولة ومفهوم علاقة الفرد بالدولة ومفهوم الحرية وعلاقة الحرية بالدولة هل تعتقد أنه كان للديانة الكاثوليكية دور فيه في فرنسا ودور للديانة البروتستانتية في الولايات المتحدة well, what is, what is uh, true is that uh, the state in our country appeared under Louis XIV. The state appeared strong uh, since that time. And uh, the Catholic Church probably um, helped in uh, you know, uh, making such a, a, a strong place to the, I would say, public authorities. But then we had to separate churches and state. And it took us a long time, and it was very difficult. And we went to, as you know, the 1905 law, separating uh, churches and the state. Uh, but we have, uh, I would say, a tradition. We keep that tradition of having a strong state, uh, respecting a civil society and fundamental rights. Uh, but in a way, it is true that our country remains Colbertist. You remember Colbert? Um, and uh, here, I mean, the people who came here, uh, they, they came to America because they were not happy in Europe. And they came here to build something different. And it is true that, uh, especially regarding the idea of a limited government, uh, which is very American, uh, well, it means that uh, the government uh, has to do uh, its job, but, but not more, and uh, that the civil society is first. And uh, probably this comes from the founders and from the very beginning of this country. Yeah. كيف تعتقد أن مفهوم انفصال الكنيسة عن الدولة في فرنسا يختلف عن نظيره في الولايات المتحدة؟ I don't think it's, it's so, so much different. I think the principle is the same. Uh, in this country, uh, you keep some uh, 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 presence of God, I would say, in daily life also in official ceremonies, like the president taking the oath on the Bible, you know, and uh, saying, so help me God. To us, it would appear uh, just not possible because of uh, our uh, secularist tradition. But the principle is the same, I mean, uh, living to God what belongs to God and living to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. And to me, it is, it is very nice to be, uh, to live with uh, people, to work with people uh, who have their belief, their religion, uh, respectful to each other, but living together in a space where we do not emphasize too much on the personal belief. طيب, يعني إذا كان هذا التشابه ينطبق إلى حد كبير فيما يتعلق بالحالة الفرنسية والحالة الأمريكية القاسم أو أحد القواسم المشتركة فيما يتعلق بما يتم نقاشه في فرنسا ويتم نقاشه في الولايات المتحدة في الوقت الراهن هو مسألة الإسلام والمسلمين في المجتمع الفرنسي والإسلام والمسلمين في المجتمع الأمريكي أنتم تزورون الولايات المتحدة على الطلاع بما يدور في الولايات المتحدة كيف تختلف بتصوركم الطريقة الأمريكية في مناقشة قضايا الإسلام والمسلمين في المجتمع الفر... الأمريكي عن الطريقة التي يناقش بها الفرنسيون الإسلام وقضايا المسلمين في المجتمع الفرنسي 
Well, you see, to the French, I mean, uh, Islam is, is a long uh, history. Uh, I like to tell uh, uh, my audience here that uh, uh, the first person uh, who did translate the Quran in the 12th century was French, uh, Pierre Le Venerable de l'Abbé de Cluny. And as you know, we had a very strong position in North Africa, uh, and we have a relationship with the Arab world uh, since very long and also with uh, Muslim uh, countries in Africa. So we are used to live uh, uh, together. We have uh, about six million uh, Muslim uh, population in our country. And I was just telling the students yesterday at Georgetown that my three assistants in Paris are Muslim. We live together, we, we like each other very much. And uh, I think in this country, uh, the figures are not the same at all. Uh, I mean, the, 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 the Muslim community in the U.S. Mu must be about two million or something, and uh, for such a large country. And uh, I think to the Americans, uh, the, the idea of um, having that uh, religion uh, live with that religion may be uh, not as uh, usual as uh, uh, it is for the French. Yeah, so that may be the difference. The figures and, and the way of life and the history. بطبيعه الحال بالنسبه للمسلمين في الامريكي في الولايات المتحده هناك من يقدر عددهم بمليونين هناك من يقدر عددهم بسبعة سبعة ملايين هناك من يقدر عددهم ب ملايين انما ما علينا قضيه النقاش في المجال العام النقاش الذي يدور حول الإسلام وقضايا المسلمين في المجتمع الفرنسي والمجتمع الأمريكي مثلا قضية النقاب وقضية قضية النقاب وقضية الحجاب في فرنسا نشهد منذ فترة طويلة نقاشات حادة فيما يتعلق بهذا الملف نشهد نقاشات أقل حدة بكثير في الولايات المتحدة حول مسألتي الحجاب والنقاب لماذا بتصوري Okay, so I have to explain about our law. As you know, the French Parliament passed a law, voted a law, which uh, does con uh, prohibit concealment of the face in public. That law comes from uh, a situation, a situation that uh, about 2,000 women in our country used to wear niqabs or burqa. And the French Parliament was interested in that. Interested because uh, uh, to us, and I, I, I could say more about that, to us uh, the face, a uh, human face, has a very strong role in communication and uh, I would say more in civilization. And uh, being a member of a group means to communicate. Being outside in public space means to look at people and being seen. And uh, uh, the parliament decided that when one walk in public space, one should not cover the face. That's the principle, that's the rule. It is true that it came from a situation uh, that we had, uh, especially in the south of France and in uh, the Indian Ocean, where some women covered their face, and uh, uh, th these women uh, uh, are Muslim. But again, the law is not again uh, is not again uh, Islam. The law is not again any religion. The law is not about politics, because as you know, our new president, François Hollande, and the, the current government say they wouldn't change nothing to the law. It is just about uh, the idea of living together and showing the face when uh, one is in, in public space. Then, if it is about uh, places of worship, or I mean private uh, uh, places, uh, that's fine. You can uh, close as you want. But uh, not uh, concealing the face to us is a very basic principle of living together. إنما طبعا عطفا على ما قلته الآن قد يجادل أولا بأن مسألة منع ارتداء النقاب في المجال العام هو تدخل للدولة في حرية الفرد 
لا نرى كثيرا من ذلك هنا في الولايات المتحدة ثم قد يجادل بأن العيش معا يتحقق أكثر لو سمح للناس في المجتمع حسب الأديان وحسب الانتماءات العرقية بأن يرتدي كل واحد منهم ما يرى أنه يمثل هويته فذلك هو ما يحقق حرية المجموعات في المجتمع Well, you know, um, I have to come back again to the idea of what does uh, being free means. What does it mean? It means for you and me doing what you want to do. Uh, have any belief, uh, have any life you want to have until it is not harmful to the society, to others. Because Why others? Because uh, we are not alone. We live as a group of humans and uh, we have to respect others. And my freedom has a limit. My freedom limit is your freedom. And uh, yesterday we talked about some things which uh, can happen uh, in public space, you know, like uh, I was mentioning uh, uh, naked biking, you know. Uh, we, we refused in uh, France to have these guys biking naked because they say this is my freedom not to have any clothes and to bike. Okay. Well, uh, there are many other examples where uh, being in a public space needs some respect to others. Uh, if we uh, uh, prohibited uh, the concealment of the face, Again, it is not because we do not respect the, the freedom of others to, as you're right, to uh, wear what they want to wear. Just, you can wear a veil, you can be, uh, I mean, have any clothes you like, but please show your face. That's the only thing. هل المطالبة بالكشف عن الوجه في فرنسا في الحالة الفرنسية لأن هناك حالات طبعا مشابهة هنا في الولايات المتحدة إنما يعني في فرنسا أولا هل الهدف الأساسي هو الأمن حتى يعرف الناس من أنت يجب أن تكشف وجهك هل هو نابع من غريزة في الأعماق المجتمع الفرنسي التي تعادي بعض الأديان ومن بينها الإسلام ما هو الدافع بتصورك في العمق لهذه المسألة مسألة المطالبة بكشف الوجه okay. well, the, the, You mentioned two different things The issue of security It is obvious for everybody I just saw that Qatar or Indonesia worried uh, about uh, uh, people wearing burqas because they could not be identified and they were a threat for uh, security. And security is, uh, I mean, an issue for any country uh, and uh, whatever, it, it, I mean, it is uh, uh, a Muslim country or non-Muslim, I mean, that the, the issue is the same. But uh, again, uh, there is another issue not security, which is public order. What is public order? Public order is uh, living together in a peaceful way, okay, being free and to be safe when you walk outside. But there is also a non-material dimension of public order. And that non-material public order is made of uh, uh, minimum requirements. These requirements are a minimum. And we do consider, because, uh, you know, France has a face. It has a very, very long history. We have, a, we have an identity, and uh, uh, a part of that, that identity is made of Republican values, I would say citizenship. And being a member of our group of citizens, to us, on behalf of that non-material public order, and again, inside these minimum requirements, is show your face that's it في الولايات المتحده كما تعرفون العديد عندما اتخذ القرار منع النقاب في فرنسا العديد من الامريكيين استهجن القرار العديد من الامريكيين استغرب القرار يقولون هذا شيء غريب عنهم هم كامريكيين غريب عن الثقافه الامريكيه يعني مثلا في الجانب الامني هناك مثلا بعض الولايات التي تحظر 
الغطاء الوجه مثلا كما كان يمارس عند جماعات الكوكلاكس كلان العنصرية لكن بشكل عام ليست للمجتمع الأمريكي مشاكل مع مسألة النقاب أو مسألة الحجاب معنى ذلك أن الخلل كما يقولون في الثقافة السياسية الفرنسية Well, I do understand very, very much the uh, the position of uh, American observers because uh, uh, you see the law as something attempting to uh, free speech and free religion. What I mean, you do not respect these uh, women because they wear, I mean, their clothes because uh, this is uh, their belief. Uh, and again, uh, uh, that's the main uh, misunderstanding. Uh, we are respectful of uh, free religion. We are respectful to uh, individual freedom. We are respectful to free speech. Uh, and uh, this, to us, this uh, prohibition is uh, related uh, to uh, the necessity uh, to organize life together. And if you look at the case law of Strasbourg, the court of Strasbourg, it makes a balance you know, between individual freedom and the, the, the duty for the government to protect the fundamental rights, but also the duty uh, for the government to make rules making life possible. And I'm going to tell you something. Uh, if uh, we uh, had no law like this, okay, uh, it would help some extremists in our country to have uh, language and, and programs again the Muslim community because they would tell uh, uh, some people and some of their electors uh, look at uh, this uh, you know Muslim women and uh, the, the, it's, uh, you, it is not acceptable and it would it would uh, increase the fear you know it, it would not uh, uh, go uh, into uh, the favor of peace of having a peaceful life to me that law is a good law because it makes uh, uh, peace between people. Uh, and uh, I, I lived in the, I, I told you, I, I lived in, in Algeria. I went to Lebanon many, many times. I live in Malaysia, which is a Muslim country. And uh, I'm, I'm, I mean, I, I'm, I can say I'm a friend of the Arab world. And, uh, and, and, and I find this very nice not, not to have uh, people cutting themselves from the group. Uh, then I, I mean the the the, the guy I I, I cherish the most in my building in my office building is a Muslim and uh, we speak uh, every day and he's the most uh, the warmest person I ever met. Um, بالنسبة لي ما تحدثت عنه الآن بالنسبة للهوية الفرنسية هناك انتقادان طبعا انتقاد أمريكي وانتقاد من المسلمين الذين يعيشون في فرنسا الانتقاد الأمريكي يقول إن مبادئ الجمهورية في التركيز على الإيمان بمبادئ الجمهورية قد حل محل الدين في فرنسا رقم واحد رقم اثنان بالنسبة للمسلمين الذين يعيشون في فرنسا يقولون الهوية الفرنسية هم جزء من الهوية الفرنسية آباؤهم وأجدادهم ساهموا في تحرير فرنسا مثلا ساهموا في إعادة بناء الاقتصاد الفرنسي بعد الحرب العالمية الثانية كثير من الأمور الحيوية وبالتالي مسألة الحديث عن النقاب كتهديد لي أو إخلال للأمن العام العديد منهم ينظر إلى ذلك كأمر ليس غريب فقط بل كأمر عنصري يستهدفهم لأنه يعبر عن اعتقادهم وحريتهم الشخصية كمسلمين Well, I do agree with you about uh, the role of uh, uh, the uh, immigration in our country. And we are very grateful to uh, the North African community uh, for the work they have done in this country. And uh, still today, they are assuming jobs that others do not want to assume. And, uh, and we live together, in a, I would say, in a perfect way, in a peaceful way. Um, but I do not see at all 
that low as a discrimination, uh, I think the French government would be exactly would have exactly the same position if tomorrow there was a, I, I don't know a non-believer group or a Christian group or a Jewish group. Uh, uh, having uh, some habits uh, cutting themselves from the community. We would say exactly the same. So again, it is not about Islam. Uh, it is about uh, what I mentioned, which is the necessity to live together with a face. ماذا عن الانتقاد الامريكي فيما يتعلق بمبادئ الجمهوريه كما تعرفون العديد من الامريكيين يقولون الفرنسيون في الاصل فصلوا الدين عن الدوله لكنهم في النهايه استبدلوا الدين بهذا الايمان الذي يرى الامريكيون انه غير مرن الايمان بالجمهوريه فاصبحت الايمان بالجمهوريه كانه ديكتاتوريه جديده تقيد الحريات في المجتمع الفرنسي I don't see that as a dictatorship, you know. There is often a misunderstanding about French secularism. Uh, please do not see la laïcité, French secularism, as something uh, related to the civil society. Secularism is not about civil society. By nature, civil society is free. Secularism is a duty to the government to public authorities, to remain neutral. And if this is what you call being a religion, I would say, no, it's not a religion. It is not related to uh, uh, belief uh, uh, to any, I mean, uh, 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 transcendent uh, uh, power. It, it is related to the necessity for the government to be neutral and, uh, and to keep some Uh, Republican values uh, that we think are, are uh, uh, a progress for uh, our society. كيف يختلف ذلك بإيجاز عن ما تعينه هنا في الولايات المتحدة بالنسبة للعلمانية الأمريكية? Well, I think you know your country was built on, uh, I'd say, the, from the same roots. but uh, on uh, uh, different pillars uh, and uh, freedom of religion here uh, for historical reasons uh, has a very central place uh, but you also have uh, uh, the, the principle of secularism which is uh, I mean in your constitution uh, I mean the neutrality of the state of the government uh, but uh, uh, yes I think In a way, it is possible to say that free speech and free religion are, I would say, have a, a, a broader scope, a, a wider scope here than in Europe. Also because we did not have the same history. You know, there is something that I wanted to mention about public order and living together and being careful with some radical uh, thoughts. It is that, uh, unfortunately, Uh, communism and Nazism, the two worst ideologies uh, who made uh, so much uh, unhappiness and uh, uh, so much suffering, uh, it happened in Europe. It did not happen in, in the U.S. And the Europeans, French uh, and other nations, have a different uh, view, you know, on uh, some uh, behaviors. Uh, in this country, okay, burning a Koran or burning a Bible in public, okay, that's free speech. We would say, no, we cannot accept that. Why? Just because we had uh, that history, a very painful history. And so we, we are careful with that. I think that's a big difference. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.